You really chose to come here? You really chose to come to... To get to Nebra, we're of course going to need some kind of launch vehicle. I decided to use my existing Meridian 2B Hush. This thing is small, powerful, and more reliable than the average Boeing door. Huh, who could that be? Oh hey, are you someone contracted by Boeing? Oh, that's awesome, I'm a big fan of Boeing. What can I help you with? Wait, what's that thing behind you? Oh fuck. My launch vehicle consists of several parts. These include the Carolux boosters, Carolux core, the hydrogen upper stage, and of course the payload bay which houses the fairing interstage for the payload which is going to be your Nebra lander and the command chip for the vehicle. So now you're probably wondering how much delta v we need to get to Nebra. Now bear in mind all these numbers are very rough values. For a flyby you're going to need 9850, for a low circularized orbit you're going to need 10550, and for a landing you're going to want 12150. Of course on the landing you can use air braking as well as on the flyby so if you're smart you won't even need near this amount of delta v. Next let's check out the Nebra lander. Now bear in mind there are many different lander designs you can use on Nebra. You could have a submarine that lands by parachute in the ocean, you could propulsively land on the volcanoes, you could re-enter and then use a jet aircraft, or you could even make a craft that's light enough to survive re-entry and actually float its way down into the ocean without exploding. If you don't already know, Nebra has a very high and very thick atmosphere, so you don't actually need a lot of fuel because you can do a lot of atmospheric braking. And this factor will play a key role into our lander design. First of all, you'll notice the lack of a heat shield on my lander. That's because the atmosphere is thick enough and high enough that if we play it right, we shouldn't have to ever use a heat shield to survive re-entry. The craft has solar panels. Since I haven't put an RTG on this craft, these solar panels were very important to charge us on our way to Nebra. We of course have landing gear. I'm going to use these with the dampeners because Nebra has very rocky terrain with what little terrain it has. So we're likely going to be landing on a slope. And finally, we have the engine section. I decided to use four monopropellant engines. This is going to give us plenty of delta V on the lander, and we should also have enough thrust when we come to land because we will have expended the majority of our fuel so that the monopropellant engines should have high enough thrust to land. They're also extremely helpful for in-orbit maneuvering. Of course, you could also land by parachute, but that has its own advantages and disadvantages. I decided to go with engines. All right, so now we're ready to set sail on our way to Nebra. We're going to be launching from Drew Space Center small pad, and we're of course going to be launching towards the east for this one. Now I'd like to say this now, we won't be using any gravity assist during this video. Whilst I did originally plan this being the case, I thought it would be a bit too complex for newer players. However, I do plan on giving gravity assist their own video in the future. So we're going to ascend our way up into low Drew orbit, and once we get to orbit, we're going to deploy the fairing and the solar panels on our lander. Now we're going to set up our first maneuver node. We're going to use this to get to Tidos first and then to Nebra. If you know how to do it, you could also do this straight from Drew to Nebra, but I decided to make this as simple as possible. So here's the position I recommend to time warp to get Drew and Tidos in. There are slightly more optimal positions, but this is the one I went with. Of course, make sure you target Nebra so we know where we're going, and now we're going to use the maneuver node to boost up to Tidos. Remember to hit the lock maneuver node button, the engine burn button, and of course the time warp button to start the node. And once the burn's finished, we're going to time warp our way up to Tidos. Once we've arrived in Tidus' sphere of influence, we're going to retrograde burn to get ourselves into Tidus orbit. And once we've cut our Tidus orbit down a bit lower, we're going to set up our next maneuver node to go to Nebra. Setting this up should be very easy, providing you're on the right inclination. And as you can see there, we got our Nebra intercept. Next we're going to go into the sphere of influence of Nebra and we're going to burn retrograde. And now we should have our Nebra orbit. Congratulations on making this far. Next we're going to cut our orbit down so we can have an easier time landing and re-entering. The way I'm going to do my landing is very simple. We're going to cut our periapsis down to about 40 kilometers. This is going to be inside Nebra's atmosphere. And providing you've cut your orbit down low enough generally, then Nebra's atmosphere should slow you down naturally without blowing up anything. This means you waste almost no fuel and the landing cost barely anything as well. And so now you can see I'm re-entering and I'm not using my engines at all or any parachutes as well and I am slowing down very fast and without blowing anything up. And eventually when we get down to our landing we'll have to use barely any fuel and we landed successfully. Big congrats to landing on Nebra if you succeeded and now we're going to go over some of the marked locations around the moon.
Hey, hopefully you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. I'd just like to quickly state the obvious that I haven't been uploading or even streaming very often recently. That's mostly due to a deterioration in my mental health. I wouldn't normally say something like that on the channel, but I decided I wanted to give a bit of an explanation as to why I haven't really been uploading very often. Hopefully eventually I'll get better and I can start uploading more frequently again. I'd like to give a huge thanks to our channel members, Pedro, IC Industries, Reknarek, Adam Cat, Puggly Wuggly, Buzak and Karnasa for supplying the funding for the music you can hear during the video. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.